This is the true story of the Mechanical Turk, the world's first chess-playing robot. The year is 1770. Unlike today, machines cannot yet defeat humans at chess. In fact, they can't play chess at all. Enter Wolfgang von Kempelen. This Hungarian inventor, craving fame and fortune, as well as wishing to impress this Empress of Austria, designs the world's first chess-playing automatron, or as we modern-day folk would say, robot which became known as the Mechanical Turk, or simply the Turk. This device, consisting of the upper half of a mechanical man dressed in robes and a turban, sitting over a chessboard, was able to defeat most human challengers by what appeared to be purely mechanical means, without any human intervention. It could apparently see and respond to the moves made on the chessboard in front of it by moving the pieces with its mechanical arm, and would even make head movements as if it were looking back and forth to survey the situation on the board. Kempelen toured Europe with his miraculous invention, which defeated some notable celebrities such as Benjamin Franklin and Napoleon, whose game I will show you at the end of this video. However, many people were skeptical and suspected that the device was operated by a human chess master, cleverly concealed within the innards of the device. Despite the fact that the doors located on the lower half of the Turk were thrown open prior to the games to reveal a clockwork-like interior to the audience. The Mechanical Turk received so much attention that even Edgar Allan Poe wrote an essay detailing his theory of how a human might be hidden inside, involving the use of cleverly placed mirrors and the shifting of the chess master's body within the device as the different doors were opened to the audience. After Kempelen died, ownership of the Mechanical Turk changed hands several times over the next 70 years or so, as public appearances continued, although with dwindling interest. Eventually, the Turk and its secrets were lost forever in 1854 when it was destroyed in a museum fire. All that remained were the competing theories of how exactly a human was able to hide inside the device and operate it, as well as some of the games it played. Perhaps its most famous game was the one in which it defeated Napoleon, which I will analyze now, with the assistance of an authentic chess playing machine, Stockfish 15. In this game, Napoleon has the white pieces, and the mechanical Turk is playing black. Napoleon begins with the move e4, the Turk responds e5. Now queen f3 from Napoleon, not known to be a very strong move, but it does set up the possibility of threatening the scholar's mate, which Napoleon does on his next move. After the Turk plays knight c6, there's bishop c4, threatening, queen takes f7, checkmate, known as the scholar's mate. This is easily prevented though, the Turk simply plays knight f6, and this blocks the queen's access to that f7 square. Knight e2 now played by Napoleon. This is a good move. Perhaps the knight will jump to g3 and then to this nice f5 square. The Turk plays bishop c5. Now here Napoleon plays a move which is not great. a3. Perhaps he's worried about knight a5 attacking his bishop and he wants to tuck his bishop back to this a2 square. Or maybe he wants to give this bishop a kick at some point with b4 and then develop his bishop to b2. I don't know, but this move's a little bit slow. It's better to just simply castle or develop a piece with knight b to c3. But after a3, the Turk plays d6. Napoleon castles, and now bishop g4 comes with tempo, meaning it's attacking the white queen, which must move. Now, the Turk plays knight to h5, eyeing this f4 square, and this already comes with a threat. If it were black's turn to move again, knight to f4 would be a nice move. It attacks the queen, and it attacks this knight with two pieces. The queen does not have a square it can move to where it can maintain defense of this knight, meaning knight takes f4 is pretty much forced. After black recaptures, there's now the threat of playing f3, which will severely disrupt and weaken the pawn structure around the white king. White cannot prevent this move by playing f3 himself, because that pawn is pinned by this bishop on c5. It may not move forward. So Napoleon deals with this by playing h3 with an attack on the bishop. This, however, is not a good move. Better would have simply been to play knight b to c3, adding defense to this knight, so that if knight f4 is played, queen to g3, this knight is adequately protected. But after h3, the Turk has this nice move, bishop takes e2. And after the queen takes, knight to f4. That knight's on a beautiful square, ominously close to white's king, and it's attacking the white queen. Now here Napoleon needs to play queen to g4. It's very important to prevent the black queen from joining in the attack with queen to g5. But Napoleon blunders with the move queen to e1. 
Now here the Turk missed a mate in eight moves. It played knight d4. It could have had checkmate in eight with queen g5. Okay, the obvious threat is queen takes g2 checkmate. If you try to play g3, this loses very quickly because queen takes g3 check is possible. This pawn is still pinned. It may not take the queen or the white king will be in check. After the white king moves, queen g2 is checkmate. So a better defense would be g4. But here black can take the pawn on h3 with check. After the king moves, the knight can go to f4, threatening to come in here with the queen. White doesn't have a good defense. You can move the king over, but this will end in a checkmate in two moves. And if you make some other move, black will simply play queen h4 check. Once the king moves, queen to g3 is checkmate. The queen cannot be captured. The pawn is still pinned. That would have been the quickest win for the Turk. But instead it played knight d4, which is also a totally winning move. This carries a couple nasty threats. Maybe the most obvious threat here is if it were black to move again, knight to f3 check, forking the white king and queen. If white doesn't want to lose his queen, he's going to have to remove that knight. But this unfortunately allows queen to g5 check. Once the king moves, queen to g2 check mate. And there's also the threat of queen g5, which is a mate in six moves. There's that threat as well. G3 is played. Here, we don't capture the pawn with the queen because this pawn is not pinned, since this knight is blocking that bishop's view. But instead, knight to f3 check, king moves, queen to h5, looking to capture that pawn. The only defense would be to move the pawn, but then after queen g4, the threat is to come in here and deliver checkmate. White doesn't really have anything to do about it. Queen h3 will be checkmate. Napoleon doesn't do anything about any of these threats. He simply plays this strange move, bishop to b3. The Turk misses both queen g5 and knight f3 check, but instead plays a different move, knight takes h3 check, which also wins, just not as quickly. If you take the knight here, knight f3 check forks the king and queen. So Napoleon apparently saw that and just moved his king out of check. Now the Turk plays queen to h4 threatening a nasty discovered check. If it were black's turn to move again, there would be knight f4 check, king moves here, and then knight f to e2 check. The only legal move for white would be to remove that knight with the queen, but the knight is simply replaced with the other knight, and this is checkmate. I don't know if Napoleon saw that, but he prevented it with this g3 move attacking the Turk's queen. Unfortunately, this move doesn't save him as it allows knight to f3 check, to which Napoleon responds, king to g2. This allows the Turk to take his queen out with check, so maybe a little better defense would be king to h1. That way the knight could not capture the queen with check, but this still runs into checkmate. This black queen simply moves out of danger. Again, the discovered check is threatened. So let's say the king tries to get out of the way of that discovered check here, there's knight to f4 check. The only legal move is to capture the knight. Then there's queen g4 check, king to h1, queen to h3 mate. But instead of king h1, king g2 is played. The queen is taken with check. Again, the Turk had a quicker way to win, starting with knight f4 check. If the knight is taken, then queen g4, king h1, queen h3 mate, like we saw before. There's the additional option of taking the knight on f3, but this also leads to checkmate after queen to h5 check. The only legal move is to put that pawn in the way, after which queen to h3 is again checkmate, just with the king on a different square. So instead of that mate in four, the queen is taken with check. The Turk takes the knight on e1, which Stockfish is telling me is a mate in eight. Napoleon captures the knight and the Turk Place queen to g4, threatening knight f4 check. Since this pawn is now pinned, it may not make any captures. Napoleon plays d3, covering this f4 square. So if the knight tries to deliver a check, the bishop can take it out. But unfortunately, there was a second threat. This pawn here is hit by the bishop and the knight. So the Turk takes out that pawn, now threatening queen takes g3 check. 
Napoleon plays rook to h1, maybe hoping to win that knight, but it's a little late because queen takes g3 check comes. The king moves. Now bishop d4 played by the Turk, threatening the checkmate on f2. So Napoleon starts trying to run with his king. Queen g2 check. The king moves to d1. The rook on h1 is taken with check. The king moves to d2. Now queen g2 check by the Turk. King moves to e1. And now knight g1, threatening to mate on e2. Knight c3 is played, covering the e2 square. But after bishop takes c3 check, the pawn captures. Queen e2 is checkmate. And so Napoleon was defeated by the mechanical Turk in the early 19th century. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this story and the game. Please subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos coming soon.